Ladies and gentlemen, a first pre-release for Minecraft Java Edition 1.17 is out. There's already a main update video out on this channel with all the gameplay updates. In this video, we're going to take a look at all of the technical changes, and there are quite a few of those, including upgrades to the advancement system, new options for profiling performance, especially on the server side, and some changes to custom world definitions. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through all the changes in this pre-release. And let's get into it, starting with a command fix. If you use the attribute command to set the max health to a very low value, then that could cause the client to think that the player was dead, while that was not actually the case. A fake death, if you will. Let's talk about structure blocks. There was a synchronization problem that meant that structure block data length is limited to 12 rather than 128 that is fixed in this version. For resource packs, all the candle models and textures are back in in this version and also there are new model versions and textures for candles with an underscore lit suffix. This of course is the texture and model used when the candle is lit. And the file has changed, the credits file is now a .json file instead of a text file. Let's talk about tags. There's a problem in the need stone tool block tag where non wax weather copper blocks appeared twice and the oxidized versions didn't appear at all. That has been fixed in this version. There are new block tags in this version too. They are geode invalid blocks and lava pool stone replaceable. Connected to world gen features. Flowering azalea and flowering azalea leaves are now in the flowers tag rather than in the small flowers tag. Now let's talk about those advancements. There are lots of new things for advancements in this version and let's start with new triggers. There's one called Started Riding that is triggered when a player starts riding a vehicle or an entity starts riding a vehicle which is currently being ridden by a player. It has a condition player and that represents the player that started riding or that was already riding when another entity stepped aboard. There's another new trigger called Lightning Strike that is triggered when a lightning finishes, which means that the entity vanishes. It triggers for players within a certain radius of the strike and have three conditions. They are player, which is that player in question, lightning for the lightning entity, and bystander for one of the entities in the certain area around the strike who has not been hurt by it. And finally, there is a using item trigger, which is triggered for every tick when you are using an item. Using an item in this case defined as something that has a continuous using state, like a crossbow, a spyglass or a fishing rod. Two conditions for this one, they are player, which is the player using the item, and item, which is the item being used. One change to a pre-existing trigger in this version as well, it is effects changed. That now has a source, which matches the entity that triggered the change. And that source might be empty if there is no entity. For instance, if you got the effect from a beacon, if you applied it to yourself, or if the effect has been removed. A bunch of predicates have been changed as well. The item predicate has been expanded. It now has an items list instead of an item field, of which any of the provided items will count. Same thing goes for the block predicate. The block field has been replaced with a blocks field, which is also a list of block types. The entity predicate has new sub predicates. They are passenger, which is a new sub predicate for a passenger directly riding this entity as a vehicle. And if that is present, it must match one or more entities. Stepping on, which is a location predicate for the block the entity is currently standing on and the lightning bolt, which is a sub predicate, which is only valid for the lightning bolt entity. There are two checks here, blocks set on fire, which is a range check for the number of blocks set on fire by this lightning bolt entity, and entity struck, which is a predicate for entity struck by the lightning. If that predicate is present, then it must match one or more of the struck entities. The player predicate has also got an addition, it is looking at which is the entity currently being viewed by the player. Uses the same line of sight rules as attacking mobs. And one thing to keep in mind is that the actual detection radius might be changed in the future. And those were the changes to the advancement system. Let's move on and talk about performance and stability. A fix has been done to an initial lag spike whenever the game would first acquire a skin for a custom player head. This means two things, the game will run smoother now, but also that acquiring the player skin for a custom player head might take a while while you are playing the game. 
Anyway, this should make custom maps with lots of player heads much more pleasant to play. There are also a couple of crash fixes in this version for invalid data in world generation causing the game to crash. But the big news is that there's new performance metrics reporting in this version. The F3 and L shortcut has been expanded and now captures more data. You will get a zip file out of that, it will be in debug profiling with the date and time, the level name and the version that you are in. That zip file contains both some systems information and the statistics about the state of the game as well as profiler measurements. Note that the exact metrics and format of these might change between versions. There's also a new command for dedicated server, it is perf with a start or stop parameter. Perf start will start a recording for 10 seconds capturing metrics such as tick durations, used heap sizes and more detailed statistics. The performance measurements will run for 10 seconds or will end early if perf stop is used. When complete, a similar zip file as for the F3 and L command will be saved to the debug folder. And this replaces the debug report command, which has been removed. Let's end off with some custom world changes. Tree configurations have a new field. It is sapling provider and it is a block state provider. Geode features now have a new field called invalid blocks that references a block tag. And nether fossils now have a configuration with a height field, which is a height provider. And those are all the technical changes in Minecraft 1.17 pre-release 1. I hope you found this useful and if you did, please help me out in return, drop a comment down in the comment section, leave a like and share this video. Any interaction with the video helps it out on YouTube and helps out the channel, so I do appreciate it. Also thank you to some folks helping me out making these videos. Thank you Jock Cool, Noinainter and Vegeoid for your assistance. But that's gonna do it for today. My name is Slice Slime, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.